As individuals approach retirement, they typically hold various accounts, sometimes quite a few, and they're usually scattered around. And they usually have a substantial portion of their savings in a tax-deferred company 401k plan. And deciding what to do with these accounts when you retire is gonna be crucial for maximizing benefits and minimizing lifetime tax liabilities. In today's video, I'm going to discuss your available options and factors in order to make the best choice for your situation. Because failing to make an informed decision will likely result in you paying higher taxes than necessary in retirement. For your 401k specifically, you're gonna have basically three different options to consider. First, just leave it in place. You simply leave your funds at your former employer's 401k plan, but as you'll see, this is probably gonna be a bit prohibitive. Number two, you can take a full cash distribution. Now this of course is gonna mean withdrawing the entire balance of your 401k in cash. However, this option would incur significant tax liabilities, making it a bad choice for most retirees and defeating the purpose of funding a tax deferred account in the first place, which was to save money in taxes. Because you were probably told to fund this account with pre-tax money, thinking that your tax rate in retirement was going to be lower than while you were working. So this one usually doesn't make much sense either. And then three, you can roll over or transfer to an IRA or an individual retirement account. Now this option allows for a tax-free transfer to a traditional IRA, preserving the tax deferred status and preventing a taxable event. Also, note that if your 401k has an after tax or Roth balance, you will want to make sure that you roll those monies to a Roth IRA. Often we see 401ks with both tax deferred and after tax money. So you wanna be mindful of that so that you're getting those monies into the proper accounts. Now, factors to consider when making decisions regarding your 401k and other accounts. First of all, expenses. As with anything, you always wanna determine costs. You're gonna to wanna to determine the fees associated with your 401k plan and compare them with what they might be if you moved your money to an IRA. 401k plans often have fund fees, record keeping fees, admin fees, and other fees that aren't very transparent. So you might have to do a little digging and you might have to look into your summary plan description, or you might have to reach out to your human resources to determine your total plan costs. However, IRAs are going to have access to transparent, low cost options. And some 401k plans might also have very low cost options, but you're gonna be limited in other ways that I'm gonna go into. Next, investment options. Typically, 401k plans are going to offer limited investment choices, maybe between 10, 20, maybe up to 40 options. Um, maybe you're gonna have a few target date funds, et cetera. But when you enroll, you're going to see what options they have. And if you don't like what you see, too bad. But with an IRA, you're gonna have much broader and unrestricted range of investment opportunities. Thus, of course, allowing for more flexibility and control over your portfolio. Now, some plans are gonna have what they call a self-directed option. And even though there are usually some hoops to jump through to use a self-directed option, it might be worth it while you are still working because you're likely gonna get a much wider array of investment choices and options. But once you retire, you might as well simply roll your funds to an IRA because you won't be restricted to leaving your money in that 401k plan. Next consideration. Now, as I mentioned, often when I meet with people, they might have accounts scattered all over the place. It's not unusual for me to maybe see six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 different accounts. Maybe they have a few 401ks from different employers over the years. Maybe they have a few IRAs. Maybe they have a couple of Roths. Maybe they have a couple of taxable individual or joint brokerage accounts. Maybe they have an inherited IRA and so on. Managing all of these accounts in retirement can be challenging and consolidating your accounts is going to simplify tracking, tax planning, withdrawal planning, and investment management. Because ultimately we only have three account types anyway. We have tax deferred or pre-tax accounts which are gonna be your 401ks, 403bs, IRAs. And second, we have taxable, which is going to be your individual or joint brokerage accounts. 
And third, we have tax-free or Roth accounts. So there's no reason to have six, seven, eight, ten plus accounts, unless you just like making easy things difficult, and I am not one of those people. Next, accessibility. Traditional and Roth IRAs offer a greater ease of management compared to employer-sponsored retirement plans. Having all of your accounts with one custodian is going to streamline tasks and make it easier to manage strategic decision-making. 401ks or any employer-sponsored plans are basically like giant trusts, and a trust is going to be more difficult to navigate than an individual retirement account. Next, if you hold company stock in your 401k plan and you have decent gains from when that stock was purchased, you'll want to further explore the potential benefits of net unrealized appreciation. This means you could get the gain or appreciation on that stock moved to the preferable lower three bracket long-term capital gains rates. So be aware of that before just moving 401k money to an IRA because this could save you quite a bit in taxes. Next, rule of 55. If you're going to be 59 and a half or older when you retire, then you will have access to your retirement accounts penalty free. But if you're going to be retiring somewhere between the ages of 55 and 59 and a half, well, you might want to leave all or at least part of your savings in your company 401k plan because of the rule of 55. It's going to let you withdraw money from your current 401k before being 59 and a half without paying a 10% penalty as long as the following are true. First, withdrawals occur in the year that you turn 55 or later. Second, you have left your employer. But third, you can't have left your employer before you turn 55 and still use this rule. So basically you can't leave your employer at 53 and then when you turn 55, use this rule. You have to be at least 55 when you leave your employer. Now, obviously the rule of 55 and the net unrealized appreciation have additional nuance and complexities. So if those apply to you, you're definitely gonna to want to do some additional homework. Next, there is also a way to access an IRA penalty free before 59 and a half using the rule of 72T. But this should be considered a very last resort when all other options have been exhausted. And this rule has even more nuance and complexity, so I'm simply going to mention that it does exist, but that's as far as I'm going to go on that today. And finally, tax considerations. Understanding the tax implications of different account types is gonna be essential. Proper asset allocation and location will help you optimize tax efficiency. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say you have an asset allocation of 60-40, meaning 60% equities to 40% bonds or fixed income. For tax efficiency, you won't want the same exact investment allocation in your three different account types. You're going to want to take asset location and withdrawal strategy into account and have your traditional IRA or pre-tax accounts invested one way, your Roth or tax-free accounts invested another way, and your brokerage accounts invested a different way based on your needs and goals. Also Roth conversions. It's gonna be far easier to do Roth conversions in your IRA account than trying to do that in a 401k at a company sponsored plan. So bottom line, these are the factors that you will want to consider when determining the optimal strategy for managing your retirement accounts effectively. Please let us know in the comments if you found this helpful or give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Once again, Tim Dorman here, founder of Eagle Ridge Wealth Advisors. And if you would like to see how we help our clients get the most out of their financial lives in retirement, please visit us at erwealth.com and we hope to see you there.